In this video, I'm gonna get you riding no-handed, hopping up curbs, looking behind you, riding in a straight line, bunny hopping, and riding really, really slowly. Why? Because they are essential skills for cycling, plus they help build your bike handling skills and make you a better, more confident rider. Wait, what do you mean you don't need any help riding really, really slowly? It's not a skill, it's a problem. Well, yes, I kind of know what you mean, but actually what I'm talking about is riding and balancing whilst going ridiculously slowly. Now, I think that this is a skill that really helps to improve your bike handling ability. And what's more, it's something that's easy and great to practice whilst waiting for your mates to turn up to meet you for a bike ride. That's right, put GCM Plus highlights away for two minutes and do this instead. So wherever you are, look to create a little course, maybe a figure of eight around a couple of drains, start riding it and then go slower and slower and slower. You will probably feel like a plonker whilst doing it, but it doesn't really matter, does it? And the more you do it, the less wibbly and the smoother you will get. And bear in mind as well, that this skill is not just about riding slowly, it's about learning those bike handling skills that will translate to when you're riding really quickly as well. Next up, riding no-handed, a skill that often proves controversial in GCN comment sections, but one that I think is great to be able to do. Yes, it dramatically lowers the level of control you have over your bike, so you should only do it where it's safe to do so, but, I also don't think it's something that you should be afraid of. Start at the beginning by practicing taking just one hand off the bars. Now this is an essential skill, of course, for signaling in traffic, as well as drinking and eating while riding. When you go the next step and ride no-handed then, you have to keep control of the bike and steer it with your hips. You tilt the bike in the direction that you want to go. So if you want to go right, you stick your hips to the right, and back, you don't need to move them very far at all. Now, you'll find that it's actually easier to ride no-handed when you sit up tall on the bike as opposed to being hunched over the handlebars. And it does take a lot of practice, but again, this is one of those skills where I think it really helps not only to be able to do it, but to build your confidence on the bike, stop you feeling scared of your machine. Another essential skill for cycling is to be able to turn round whilst riding, which might sound stupid, but it's all too easy to turn your head and then veer across the road in the direction that you're looking. Now, as well as it being a skill you need to be able to do in order to ride safely, I also think it's another one that helps you to build confidence on the bike. So remember, you are the boss of your bike, not the other way around. It is not a horse trying to buck you off. It does not have a mind of its own. Start small. You might not need to see everything behind you, so looking underneath your arm is a good way of catching a glimpse without turning right around. If you do really need to see behind you though, take one hand off the handlebars, which allows you to then keep them pointing in a straight line, whilst then twisting your back and your neck as well. Now, I feel like it probably shouldn't need saying, but I'll say it anyway, that even if you're riding in a straight line whilst looking behind you, you do still need to keep glancing forwards to make sure you're not, well, it didn't need saying, did it? Next up, we're gonna take riding in a straight line to extremes. And this is something I still play around with all the time on the bike, which is silly, I know, because I'm 40 years old, but I like riding along a curb without wobbling off as a little challenge. Now, again, I'm convinced that this translates to a better overall level of bike handling skills, as well as improving ah, your confidence ah, on the bike. My tips on how to do it would be not looking straight at your front wheel, but a little bit ahead. Try, if you can, to keep yourself relaxed, and then avoid steering with your handlebars. Keep your balance by moving your hips from side to side instead. <music> 
Lastly, we're going to start getting our wheels off the ground. Another essential skill for cycling. It might be just to help get your bike up a curb without slamming into it. Ultimately, it might mean jumping clean over a pothole. It's quite an advanced one, but sometimes you just got to get your wheels out of danger. To start with, find some kind of line on the road and ride towards it. As your front wheel gets to it, quickly shift your weight back by moving your hips and then at the same time lifting your handlebars with your hands. You will find that that hip movement really helps to get the front wheel up. The front wheel will indeed come off the ground and then gently soar over your line. Your back wheel will now gently roll over it, which is fine if it's paint, but less so when it's a curb. So the next step is to lift the back wheel. If you're clipped into the bike, it's no issue. You just jump off the pedals and pull the bike with you. Once you're comfortable getting over your painted line, move on to a curb. Front wheel up, then back wheel up. So when do we need to leave the ground completely? Why do cyclists need to bunny hop at all? Well, to get out of the way of potholes, stones, sticks, potentially venomous snakes. You know, roads tend to be smooth, predictable surfaces, but they're not always. And so being able to jump out of danger when you can't steer away from it is essential. Being able to bunny hop helps to keep you in control. The technique is effectively just knitting the two previous skills together. Lift your front wheel first, then your back wheel, pushing forwards on your handlebars to help bring that back wheel up, and it will bring both wheels off the ground. If you're using clip-in style pedals, the rears are cheap, which is that you simply pull up with your feet at the same time as pulling up with your hands as well. Now, you get zero style points for this technique, but it is effective, so we don't really need to care about that. Just remember that however you do it, you need to cushion the impact when you land. So absorb it with your arms and your legs. So there you have it, six skills that I think you should practice, and I know that you will be very glad if you do. I always find that people that have ridden bikes since they were kids look very at home on two wheels. And I think that's because kids typically do just practice these kind of skills innately, whereas as we get older, it might not feel like the most efficient use of time. I was certainly not in zone two or zone four today, but I still think that it will pay dividends for your bike handling and your confidence as well. So make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Get involved in the comment section down below as well. Are there any other skills that you think that you should be practicing out on the bike? I'd be very interested to read it.